Hi everyone, welcome to our Tech Talk. I'm here with a few members of the North American Pelican Corp team. With me today is Thomas Young, Sam Hansiak, and Jason Manning, uh, who have many years of experience in damage prevention and technology solutions. What do you see as the most important technology in our industry for the next couple of years? Well, uh, I've been a proponent for mapping underground facilities for a long time, and um, GIS utility mapping technology has been around for years, but has gotten more accurate and easier to use very recently. Uh, this is helping to shift the public works and damage prevention uh, to adopt this technology and to use it wide widely. Um, just to give you some numbers, recent indicators also show uh, we just learned 6,000 public works professionals cited GIS as the most important technology to watch out for in 2021. Uh, the Common Ground Alliance listed updating of facility maps as one of the most effective paths to more accurate locates. Uh, their Next Practices Advisory Group also identified GIS mapping as one of their four most impactful opportunities for the damage prevention industry. And you'll see some of the state laws are shifting. So. For example, here in California, um, the new installations are going to be required to be in a GIS by 2023. Why is a GIS so beneficial? Well, in a general rule, uh, knowing where things are is very helpful. Um, so if you're doing some uh, planning and design work, uh, having you know an as-built and seeing what was in the ground beforehand is, is very nice to do. Um, if you're an excavator or a contractor and you're starting a project, uh, knowing what's in the area around you in, in that in that project is is very helpful as well. Of course, 811, you're looking at uh, making sure that the dig sites match the person who's calling in the 811 ticket matches with the the operator who's who's responding to that ticket. Uh, when a response does come out, maybe from a locator, if a locator had a map to know that, for example, the line was on the left side of the driveway, it's much faster and easier to do the locate. Um, then when the excavator is actually on the job site, if they could see, you know, what's around them in the area, they could, it could give them a lot of help in avoiding other things in the ground. And then at the end of the project, when things are all documented, the whole process starts over again. So that if you have an accurate map, all of these pieces of that process can then, you know, know what the other pieces are doing. What aspects about building a good GIS do you feel are important? I believe one of the keys to successful mapping is accuracy. Um, we can all walk around with, with the GPS on our phones and we feel like we're getting you know, decent positional references, but um, for mapping underground facilities, uh, my feeling is high accuracy uh, GNSS equipment is, is really needed to build a robust and useful GIS system. What other recommendations can you give people um, looking to map their assets? Well, many people, are so far behind or feel they're so far behind because they have legacy maps uh, that are old as built in PDFs or actual paper maps. Uh, Jason, you've seen this before, right? Yeah, I think since I've been in the industry, I've heard utilities talk about how they don't trust their GIS or their, their mapping data isn't up to date and they keep complaining about it, but no one seems to wanna just take the bull by the horns and do something about it. Uh, there's just no doubt that the, the need for the GIS is there. And now the technology and the equipment is well within reach of everyone. There's just no reason to not get started. Yeah. Uh, one thing I would say is I would recommend people do their research, uh, know what their objective is when they get started, uh, be consistent, and then also have the proper workflows in place. And um, you know, to get started is not very difficult. I've been using uh, the GeoLanus data collection platform, working around my neighborhood. The neighbors all you know, wonder what I'm doing out there, but it's, it's very easy to, to map those assets. And any final thoughts? Uh, I would just add that you know, GIS is here to stay. Uh, if you get started, you can be up to date rather quickly. Uh, overall, a good GIS system provides greater protection uh, for underground assets. It lowers costs for most parties or basically all the parties involved and most importantly can lead to greater safety. The CGA recently released a report um, that raised several concerns about the future of the damage prevention industry. Can you summarize those findings? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the reports you're referring to are the 2020 insights into improving the delivery of accurate non-time locates, as well as the next practices report, which was delivered earlier this year. And the headline for both of those reports is that the current damage prevention process is ultimately unsustainable and insufficient. You know, and there's many reasons why this may be the case, but at the heart of the problem is really what the CGA identifies as a volume and variability problem in regard to locate requests. And what that means in a nutshell is that facility operators and locators are seeing a steady increase in locate requests year after year. They're also seeing a variability problem, which means that they're seeing higher levels of locate certain times of the month uh, versus other times of the year. And that's obviously due to things like dig seasons and work backlogs. Um, but the reason overall for why we're seeing this problem of volume and variability is that uh, you know, we've got a couple of different things combining together. First, the peak adoption and awareness of the Able One process, which is obviously a good thing. Uh, we also have rapid build outs of new telco technologies like fiber and 5G. And in the US specifically, we have a backlog of projects needed to address our aging infrastructure. But the end result here is that when we look at the data like damage statistics on time and accurate locates, we notice gains are flat and in some cases even regressing. So what exactly is the problem? The problem is a problem of resource and efficiency. The damage prevention process and the technology behind it has not really changed in the last 40 years. As a result, everyone's struggling to keep up and cracks in the system are starting to show themselves a little bit. What will be the role of technology in addressing these problems? Yeah, absolutely. And to paraphrase the next practices report, automation and technology is the best and most effective path to address these challenges. Now, for instance, let's take a look at the problem of volume. A significant amount of time is spent by the facility operator evaluating, screening, assigning, and ultimately closing these locate requests. Additionally, they're dealing with a greater number of locate requests that don't actually need or require a markout. You know, so by developing smart technology uh, that can marry ticket data and GIS data, develop efficient workflows, and screen out those locates that don't require a markout, a facility operator can instantly eliminate a significant amount of time and cost in the locate process. So looking to the one call side of things, there's also significant gains in efficiency around electronic white lining and electronic locate submission, both of which will improve the process downstream as well. You know, for locators part, technology can be deployed to improve education and communication between them and the facility operators. If we look at our current damage prevention process, we see a significant gap in communication between when they submit a locate request and when the facility is actually marked. And that has a real impact on damages overall. In fact, you know, if we look at the most recent DIRT report, uh, it was noted that 10% of all damages are a result of the excavator digging before that start time and date. You know, and there's several reasons for this as well. Uh, none, none of them good, obviously. Things like a lack of awareness and education around the 801 process uh, in regard to the excavator, the role in the process and why that wait period is so important. Uh, there's things like pressure to get a job done. And then just simply the belief that there are no dangerous and critical assets within their dig site. So by deploying smart technology, we can, it allows us to get in front of this problem by instantly uh, providing communication in ex between the excavator and the facility operator the moment they receive a locate request. And this communication can be automatically customized to address you know, specific circumstances of the locate request, the facility type, or really any other circumstances, but all with the goal of ensuring that excavator you know, adheres to the correct process and is fully aware of the realities under their dig site. Awareness and education will continue to play a pivotal role in the damage prevention process. How can technology improve those efforts? Yeah, absolutely. So education has been at the heart of the 811 process really from the very beginning. And almost everywhere you look in North America, you'll find 811 call centers with really well-developed and effective programs. Uh, however, there's a lot of there's a lot that technology can do to improve this and, and bring value here. Um, you know, the most effective tool is certainly e-learning. When COVID hit, I think a lot of organizations turned an eye towards online education, and in doing so, they realized that there was a you know numerous benefits to e-learning beyond just overcoming that problem of having you know a lot of people in a classroom. Uh, you know, the first is that online education is always available, and the courses are self-paced. 
So when you take the excavators specifically, they're also dealing with that variability problem, which means that they're constantly having to hire and retrain uh, new people. And as a result, uh, you know, they're continually needing to go through that onboarding process. So rather than waiting for the next available classroom event, uh, they can have that online 811 focused training on day one, the moment they hire someone. You know, secondly, e-learning can conform to really any learning style and is retakeable. Um, so we all learn differently. Some of us do really well in a classroom settings, others don't. Uh, the beauty of e-learning is that you can present this education through, uh, through text, through video and audio, through interactivity. Uh, but the end result is that everybody walks away with that important information that you wanna convey. And I think finally, one of the biggest things about e-learning as well is it gives call centers and, and education groups an efficient and, and effective tool to really uh, push and uh, continuing education and updating their courses. And uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of work to get those things up and going. How can facility operators and one call centers start preparing for these challenges? Yeah, so, you know, while I might be biased, I truly believe that the best approach here is to look to technology partners that truly understand the challenges that we're facing on the horizon and are already working with their partner clients to develop and deploy those solutions. A good technology partner is going to be somebody whose goals are clearly aimed at creating a sustainable damage prevention process and has the experience, resources and know-how to truly create effective tools. Jason, what are the benefits of submitting tickets online as opposed to calling in the call center? Well, I mean, that's a great question. And obviously, uh, I think most of the North American industry is really heading towards that. Uh, there's been a push over the last few years to really drive uh, people to do their tickets over the web. And there's a bunch of reasons behind it. Uh, you know, one of them is pretty easy. It's, it's there all the time. Uh, it's available to people, there's no wait times, uh, it, it solves a lot of staffing issues. But I think really more importantly than that, uh, it, it leads to greater accuracy. And, and I know that there's some concerns, the, the very um, sort of objections to it sometimes are about accuracy and feeling like, you know, people won't know how to do it. But the, the simple fact is, digital maps are a part of everyone's life these days. It's absolutely ubiquitous. That's how you get around, they're in your cars. There's very, very few people who don't know and aren't sort of super comfortable and familiar with something like a Google map, right? Um, and there's no interpretation. Uh, when you're doing your own ticket, there's really no doubt. Uh, you know, the ticket goes through, the locator gets to see it. Um, there's really no interpretation. It's not like, well, I tried to explain this to someone and then they wrote it down in their words. You're going online you're uh, finding a, a, typically with an online map, um, you're filling in all the information from the dates to the extent of locate, to the type of work you're doing. And I, it really puts uh, the full sort of responsibility on the, uh, the excavator or the requester. And that's not a bad thing. They should want that. They, should, they know their job better than anyone else. Um, so it just leads to more clarity and, and better accuracy. So the people are then drawing on that map as opposed to describing it over the phone. Yeah, exactly. They're showing it. And it's really one of those cases, uh, Thomas, of like a picture is worth a thousand words. I know that's a cliche, um, but it really is. And people get to go on there and, and you know, draw that. And the accuracy, actually, there was a interesting analysis done by Alberta One Call um, for two uh, major cities in Alberta over a year where they compared damages that resulted from phoned-in requests uh, against ones that were done on the web. And this is not um, it was sort of software agnostic. It was actually as they were changing software. This is really purely about, is it more accurate for people to do their own tickets? They saw uh, a 123% increase uh, in one city and 130% increase in the other city for damages for phoned in tickets. So, uh, I mean, the, the data is clear. It's not even just by a little bit. The accuracy of uh, self-serve tickets is, is just better. And then having that greater accuracy, that has advantages too um, with screening, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that, that sort of brings us into uh, the idea of virtual white lining, uh, which is a, a bit of a hot topic, I suppose. Uh, you know, virtual whitelining is the the practice whereby 
the excavator would indicate on the map, on this digital map that they would go to to file their ticket, uh, not just sort of circling the whole neighborhood, really going on and indicating the exact location of their of their dig site. Um, when they do that, the advantages are are tremendous. As Thomas mentioned, screening. This is something where uh, it it opens up a whole world of automation. So when you know exactly where the work is being done, um, it allows you to compare that to your facility maps. Uh, Sam spoke before about you know using technology to to kind of get over the variability of the industry, and there's really no better way of doing that. Once you know exactly where the work is being done. It allows you to automatically clear. It removes any doubts that uh, a locator might have about the the extent of locates that are needed. Um, and conversely, it it does the same thing for the excavator. They've there's a clear record, a, an indisputable record of what was requested. So um, you know they can always go back, and it's it's literally drawn on the map, right? So if the locate marks don't go to the area that was indicated, well, they know the locate's no good. Uh, conversely, if uh, there's a, a damage that's outside of the area requested. There's really no doubt did the locator do their job or not. Uh, it it um, it provides a clarity and an accuracy that I, I think this industry absolutely needs. And that goes hand in hand, of course, with you know accurate underground facility maps. Correct. Oh well, I mean the whole thing ties in, right? The automation, having accurate maps. Um, the accuracy thing just carries through in every segment uh, of this. So every stakeholder benefits from that accuracy. There's there's really no one gains anything from, uh, you know, a let's say an excavator going and requesting a whole neighborhood to be located when all they needed was a front yard. Um, you know, by the same token, the locators don't want to be locating more than they need to do. That's a waste of their time. And uh, an excavator's need an accurate record of what's there. And they wanna know, you know, so that they can get their job done safely. So this accuracy, whether it be, you know, creating the ticket uh, all the way through to the uh, facility owner having accurate records, um, again, it just, it solves so many problems for this industry. Thank you so much. That was a very informative discussion. Um, Please make sure to uh, drop by the networking events uh, to continue this discussion with Thomas, Sam, and Jason. Uh, and please also make sure to stop by the Pelican Corp show booth for more information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gabby.